Yeah, hello and <clears throat> welcome to this video covering game one of the World Chess Championship match currently held in New York between world champion Magnus Carlsen from Norway and the challenger Sergei Kayakin from Russia. Yeah, yesterday we had game one and uh, Carlsen had the white pieces. Um, I actually think this is a slight advantage for the title holder because that means he also will have white in the final game, which is always, I think, uh, nice to have in case of in case you, um, yeah, have um, you're trailing one point, you have a white in the in the final game. But uh, let's start with the first game. And uh, Carlsen played one d four. It's very difficult to predict openings um, with Carlsen. He plays basically everything, and um, it's kind of this this kind of moving target. He's very difficult to prepare against, as you never know what's going to happen. He tends to play sidelines, and uh, this is what happens here. He plays the Trompovsky. Yeah, um, one of the more respectable d4 sidelines. I think that really the Trompovsky is a, is a pretty good opening. If you look for something that's a little bit off the beaten track with white, and um, something where you don't um, you know, risk much and um, have the chances of getting an interesting game, this is not bad at all. Um, yeah, black has a wide choice here. It can go um, like e6 is very solid or very sharp. It's like c5. This is, for example, what I recommended in my black repertoire that I released on Chessable earlier this year based on the Vanko Gambit. This can lead to very sharp uh, positions where black initiates complications quite early. But this is a world ch uh, championship match and um, the d5. This is probably the most classical response and no surprise that's played by Kayakin here. Yeah, um, white now um, can play e3 or he can take on f6 immediately. e3 first and after c5 Carlsen took on f6. Yeah, this is typical of the trump here yeah, to take here and give black those double pawns. The double pawns in itself, they are not that weak, but it's a structural imbalance. And um, this makes this kind of uh, capture often um, yeah, quite controversial. Um, here, Carlsen took on c5. This is not the only move. White can also play um, different things. He could go like c3 or knight c3 and to put pressure here. But uh, d takes c5 is a move that um, has been seen in Carlsen's games. He has played this uh, only, I think, three or three years ago in the time memorial against Kromnik. Back then, Kromnik played the move um, e6. And uh, it continued with uh, knight f3 and c4. So it was a pretty normal position. White has given up the bishop pair and given black this slight structural discomfort. Yeah, Kayakin played knight c6 here. This is obviously related. The knight will belong here anyway. And the difference here is that after a potential uh, c4 by white, uh, just a, a possibility, then d4 is uh, an idea. This is uh, a difference to e6. Um, this was played now by Carlsen. And now Kayakin took a long think, quite surprisingly, to play e6, which looks like the most normal move um, ever. However, I mean, black can consider different things, like let's say rook g8 or e5. Those moves um, are worth checking. Still um, surprising that he took so long, because this position, I think, should have been part of the preparation. I mean, this is all um, speculation, but um, I think there was a small, small chance of the trump being played and they should have looked at it at some point. So 20 minutes is pretty um, surprising at this point. Yeah, Carlsen played c4 to attack the center. Um, looks like a logical choice. If white plays b4 here to, to cover things, uh, the pawn, I mean, um, this is actually quite a risky decision for white. Um, black has um, various possibilities. One thing that is always interesting here is to include this move and ask about this pawn. It's however not clear if uh, white has to cover it. A move like knight e2, rook g2, knight g3 will actually trap this piece. So rook g8 could be just um, yeah, kind of a non-threat. Um, black, however, can play simple stuff. A5 is good. Attacking this pawn, white will cover it. And now black can go for a setup based on the move f5, like this, let's say. Bishop here develops, castles, castles. 
And now something with f5 is interesting to open up this diagonal. Yeah, for example, what a black could take here, takes, takes, takes f5. And here black has a very, very okay position. He's a pawn down, but he's got two bishops and a potentially very strong center, like knight d4. And black can play yeah, a cover move. He has to cover the pawn. But then he's got e5 coming, like this, for example. It's a sharp position, I think. Um, I think I'd rather be black here, maybe. But um, it's, not, it's not clear at all. So we had this move. This is probably the more conservative choice. And played quickly by Carlsen. Has been probably part of his prep here. Yeah, it takes on c4. This is um, probably most logical. In other cases, yeah, white would inflict um, an IQP on black. And the structure like this is really quite weak. I mean, you know, black has compensation with his bishops. Um, but mm, I think this is a, a very risky decision, especially against such a great... Uh, technical player as Carlsen is. So taking is, is very logical. Black is also not afraid of um, yeah white taking here yeah. to spoil castling because there is no attack coming here. White doesn't have any firepower against the black king. Black king can easily go to c7 or e8. So Carlsen played this. Don't trade queen so early. Bishop c5 was played and now knight f3 delaying the recapture a little bit. Um, here it was interesting for Kayakin to consider c3. Yeah, drop the pawn like this. He will lose it anyway, um, lose it back. Um, and now with this, white's uh, pawn structure is a bit worsened. However, it is not clear that this is so great because white gets additional options by having this, knight to d4. So it has also his minuses. Castles, castles, and now knight a5. That's an interesting move. Yeah? The knight has a look at this pawn, and it basically means that whenever white captures, there will be a knight trade. And I think black is um, quite quite happy with this. Yeah, the knight on c6 wasn't that great, and maybe trade it off makes um, yeah equality uh, more easily achievable. Um, white, of course, here could have uh, simply taken on c4 like this. That was a possibility, but after the capture and a6. It's not clear that white is all too happy with this. Yeah, it's a bit of a funny situation here with the two knights and an a6. But um, white probably now has to go for something like this. And I'm not sure that this is such a great choice. And two bishops is always a, a, tough, a tough thing to play against if you have two knights. So he played uh, rook c1 first in this position. And after bishop e7, that bishop was exposed. Now he could have taken... Um, yeah, in a much um, more in a more comfortable situation, it still doesn't lead to that much. Yeah, black can play a6 in this position, or he can simply trade everything down. The move queen c2 was a little bit more interesting here by Carlsen. Bishop d7, very logically. Yeah, this this bishop is not developed and can be traded off. White has no choice here; has to trade it. And now um, queen c3 was played. After knight takes c4, which was maybe the most obvious move, black has rook c8, utilizing the spin. And um, this leads nowhere. I mean, something like that white can play. And then, for example, black can trade this, centralize, and yeah, the likelihood of a draw in this position is extremely high. Yeah, for example, you can easily imagine something like, something like this Check. happening. Yeah? Check. And and we agree a draw. Um, yeah, Carlsen probably does not want that, that that easy kind of draw, and he goes for queen c3. Yeah, looking at this, looking at this knight. Yeah, and now black has a, a, a decision. He can play queen to d5 or can play pawn to b6. And um, I um, yesterday um, did the commentary for the ICC together with Grandmaster Ronan Hartsby, and we we looked at this position quite closely. And we, we thought that b6 would be a good choice here, um, making black's life pretty easy. After knight c4, rook c8, there's absolutely nothing for white. He has to now basically pull the plug on the game with queen d2. And we, we just have total equality here, something like this. 
is just very equal. Like f5, bishop f6, nothing's going on. Um, and more interesting is this move, attacking the f6 pawn. Yeah, and here black can play king g7 or e5. And in both cases, we didn't quite see if white has enough play here. Um, even e5 is possible. White can try to play for those weakened squares, but we, we didn't think it is all that dangerous. Something like here, for example, queen c2. And black can always, in case of a knight f5, drop back to f8 and nothing bad is happening. So it's questionable if white um, can play in this way. He's a pawn down, I mean, and this is some risk. Um, probably, um, I don't know, probably um, it would have been uh, just leading to something very, um, very equal after knight c4. Uh, Kayakin played queen d5, however, and here um, I think um, white gets a little something, at least. He took it, knight takes. Here we expected rook uh, f to d1, intermediate move, but it probably leads to the same thing. We have all the trades, rook c8. Yeah, now white doesn't have much choice. He has to play rook fc1. Yeah, he, he could have had the same position with the rook here, but again, rook c1 would be the only uh, useful move. This trade and rook d8 for the mate threat, which was addressed by g3. So we get, we get this ending. And um, yeah, what about this ending? Is this just dead equal or what's going on? In fact, it's not totally equal. Um, white has a slight edge in this position. It's not much, but it's a little something. And this is due to, um, yeah, black's slightly weakened pawn structure. The bishop is not so great in this position. The position is symmetrical. There are no majorities that are being pushed. And this means that um, the bishop's strength they cannot really be used all that much. Plus, the bishop um, doesn't get um, an easy post um, or, or, or some, some, some post on the board where it attacks something. We will see the next couple of moves that are quite logical. Yeah, like we get, we get here that the bishop is on f6 on a long diagonal, but it's an empty diagonal. It attacks absolutely nothing. And this probably uh, means that the bishop is not doing that much while well, the white knight can maneuver. Um, a key position is here after this move king d8. And we both expected and pretty much believed it to happen yeah, that um, Carlsen now would play the move g4, after which black has to take and then continue in this position. Here f4, e4, e5, king up. White has a couple of ideas to improve, but black basically just sits. He can do pretty much nothing. And we both agreed that this would have been not very comfortable for black to defend. It's very one-sided and black has zero chances of, of any activity going on. So it's something that we expected to happen, but Carlton surprised us by playing the move f4. Um, this didn't at first make any sense to us, but we uh, we understood um, quite quickly uh, what, what it was all about. First of all, Kayakin now played the move h5. He took this chance to prevent the, the move g4. And after a4, we, uh, we found um, one reasoning behind the f4 move. Because here black might think rook c7 is a good idea. However, this actually isn't that great because white has the move knight to e5, either after capturing or immediately. If we look at this, let's say knight e5 immediately, the, uh, the ending here can be extremely tricky. Like if we look at one example, this kind of ending is winning for white probably. Yeah, at least that was our, uh, our conclusion. Yeah, white can come up here and enter on g5. This would be very, very difficult for black to play. If we look at this, for example, like f6, king f4, king to f7, c5. Yeah, black has black has problems here. At the end, he might get um, he might might is faced with an outside pass pawn, like for example, like this. This is not a forced variation, by the way. I'm just showing um, a general idea, Check. like like this. This could easily easily happen. And here white white would win the game. It's um, quite quite interesting. There are ideas here that uh, are not as uh, not, not easy to grasp at first. Rook c7 
would be um, probably a big mistake. Kayakin, after a longer think, went rook d5. And this is also, from a practical point of view, a much better choice. If you're not completely sure about going into a king and pawn ending, rather avoid it, yeah? It can be it's just like stepping on a mine, yeah? <laughs> Boom. And uh, you're losing the game, even though before not much was going on. This is just a better choice. Now white cannot go knight e5. Yeah, he tried knight c5, threatening the pawn. b6, and knight to a6. So what is white's idea? If white would get this, oops, sorry, that was a wrong arrow. Um, white would get this in. That would be quite interesting, yeah, looking at the a7 pawn. But with precise defense, Kayakin prevents that. Bishop e7, and now knight b8 was the route to c6, but a5 was possible. It's not the, the nicest move. He had to put them on dark squares with the bishop here. But it, it also gives black the safe square on c5. This is what, what happened here. Bishop went to c5, blocking the c file. And uh, here we actually come to a position where, um, yeah, white can pretty much do nothing. Yeah, and what Carlsen tried was to offer the rook trade. But here we Check. are in a situation where both sides Check. cannot make any Check. progress. They shuffled a little bit back and forth and now agreed to a draw. So we had a, a pretty uneventful game one. Um, this is not very uncommon in World Championship matches. The first games are often not very exciting because especially with this um, shorter formats now, those 12 game matches, um, or if you are not in the final, I mean, there's short matches, they actually uh, push players towards being more uh, safety focused because it's hard to come back from a loss if you have only a couple of games um, available to, to level the score. So they will usually play it very close to the vest and we can only hope that this will um, loosen up a little bit um, during the course of the match. Um, the second game will be played on Saturday uh, 12th. I'll be covering this as well. Um, hopefully right after the game because it will be difficult for me to I actually I actually can do it on Sunday yeah so I will I will cover it in a, in a reasonable um, time yeah not like two days later or something like that yeah this will be um, kayaking with white we can be curious what he's going to open with e4 Berlin Wall oh, we'll see many uh, many possible openings um, that could happen. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with, um, or today, with Game 2 coverage. Bye-bye.